Hey gamers, it's Kwing here, and the lovable crazed rabbits are back once again. Yeah, baby. I always knew these zany bunnies would excel in their own game, and Rabbids Go Home for the Wii has shed its party game undies to go back to the Rayman series roots, although without Rayman. The story for the game starts out with the bunnies in a junkyard. One bunny sees the moon and has an epiphany, thinking that somehow the moon is the bunny's real home. So they decide to build a Tower of Babel of their own, tall enough to send them to the moon. Rabbids Go Home is an action-adventure platforming game where players take the command of two bunnies in a grocery cart. The goal of the game is to collect 1,000 items per level. Each item is highlighted in white circles, and the rabbits can collect just about anything, even the clothing right off the civilians' backs. Scattered throughout the game are tuba bunnies. These guys are the checkpoint guards, if you will, and it's a good idea to give them all the junk you have on hand. After beating the first zone, players are brought to the city, which acts as the hub for this game. The city itself changes over the course of the game, depending on how much stuff your rabbits have stolen from the humans. The humans eventually get sick and tired of you stealing all their stuff and decide to fight back with the Verminators. Each Verminator is different and players can tell their strength by the color they wear. As you progress through the game too, you have the ability to upgrade your bunny's powers, like a speed boost, jet skiing on water, health upgrades, and so much more. Now, Rabbids Go Home does have some mini-games, and it goes about it in a very funny way. Inside each Wiimote is a crazy rabbit and you can do lots of things to it that PETA wouldn't approve of. New to the series is literally creating your own rabbit, which is awesome! Players have the option of making 89 rabbit figurines in total, and even earning 12 unlockable bunny costumes too. The gameplay for the rabbits differs a lot compared to their last incarnations. However, this game has enough of a challenge for hardcore players, and with its pick-up-and-play gameplay mechanics, it's easy enough for casual gamers, too. Players control two bunnies at the same time. You move the bunny around with the joystick, and make him go faster by holding in the A button. The bunny in the carriage can do a yell attack by swinging the Wii Mote, and you can also launch a rabbit at your enemies by tapping the Z button. They are very useful for knocking down obstacles and blowing up stuff, too. Each level focuses on collecting the items, bringing them to the checkpoints, and obtaining the XL item to complete that stage. Then it just keeps going and going and going like a demented Energizer bunny. Ah, <laughs> I said bunny. Sometimes the developers will throw you a curveball and twist just about how you're supposed to pick up all the junk. Like floating in air with a bubble sick guy, adding racing elements, riding on inner tubes down a mountain with lots of cactuses, tilted environments, which I hated, water levels, and my personal favorite is riding on a jet turbine. Sweet! Still, this game isn't without its uh, flaws. The only reason people say this game gets really repetitive is because it feels like it has no end. I'm serious, just when you think you're near the end of the game, the chief bunny still points at the city and off you go again and again. Not to say Ubisoft doesn't up the ante for each level, they so do. And though you are revisiting, say, a hospital again, things aren't always what they appear. Rabbids Go Home does have some long load times, though, yet they cleverly hide it by having the bunnies run down the sewer pump over and over again with the item that you just collected. My last complaint with this game is the fixed camera. Now, again, this doesn't become a big concern until way later in the game when you can't move the camera around to see where you're going. But it does become a pain when you're trying to collect all 1,000 items which that in itself is not even worth the trouble because you don't get anything extra for your hard-earned effort of collecting all the items. No new present, nothing. You just get like a little stamp. What are you kidding me? I get a stamp? Actually, you only have to collect like 910 items in order to get all four presents. So as I said before, it's not even worth it. 
Alright, calm down. This game does have a lot more good stuff than bad. Let's first start with the actual visuals for this game. This is one incredible looking Wii game, and Ubisoft has played to the Wii's strengths and then some. The game's visuals take cue from the Industrial Revolution that happened around the 40s through the 70s. Then again, I may be a fan of the dark deco style because of Batman the Animated Series. Now the locations are designed to showcase the mundane routine of the humans, which is the opposite of the raving rabbits, but somehow it works out great. Rabbits Go Home goes from cell shading to real-time lighting and refractions, water transparency, reflections, cool explosion effects, and many more. The music in this game is also excellent. I may not be a big fan of the likes of John Denver, I myself am a big Billy Joe and Tom Petty fan, but Ubisoft has a great soundtrack that captures the boring vibe that human life is supposedly all about. Now the Rabbids have more of a Louisiana jazz theme that's peppy and funny at the same time, and it works for the Rabbids. Like the last game, this Rabbids game has a boatload of humor and yes, even some potty humor. Case in point, the Rabbids flush stuff down the toilet and then surf on a mattress in the sewers. Ew. While the gameplay itself is perfect, it's downright addicting and that's part of its strength. I mean, I couldn't put this game down. I have no idea how long the game is, and I don't really care. This game is just so much fun and a laugh out loud great time. But in all honesty, what consumed most of our time was creating the bunnies. Swag first told me that I could make a K-Wing bunny, and K-Wife got very excited and began work on both K-Wing and Swag bunnies for this review. Both which took about four hours to create. She's amazing, isn't she? Me, I've made some cool bunnies too, mainly stuff from my childhood like Voltron, G.I. Joe, Ghostbusters, Batman, Joker, and the Red Ranger, Jason, etc, etc. As of right now, we have over 50 created bunnies, but I've only recorded about 30. And you've actually seen some of them showcased in this review already. But the ones that you're going to see now are the ones that I'm most proud, especially my Skeletor. Now this is probably the best designed bunny that I've made. Yeah, just look at how evil and demented my Skeletor bunny looks. But K-Wife also likes my He-Man, Donatello, and I thought they came out great. And you can just see the amount of time and effort that went into making these. The game even has a few unlockable minigames too, like music games, zapping your bunny, abusing the bunny, and my personal favorite is shaking a bunny in the Wii Mode. Oh man, that's so much fun. Ah. All in all, this is a great Wii title, and I would pick it up for the little rabbit in your family. It has fun, solid, and addicting gameplay, great visuals, hilarious humor, challenging and downright zany levels, unlockable presents, and much more. So Game Nights Entertainment gives Rabbids Go Home for the Nintendo Wii an 8.2 out of 10. While Katamari and the Rabbids may be similar games, we think that the Bunnies have come a long way since their minigame days, and this game is wicked cool, and I hope the Bunnies continue to get their own series. Well, thanks so much for watching another of our video reviews. Keep it locked here for more of our trailers, gameplay vids, developer interviews, and our radio show every week. This is K-Wing as always saying God bless and happy gaming. Until we meet again, gamers. See ya!